So we're in uh, second part of second part of ten point four. Um, polar coordinates. And we're going to take derivatives today. Oops. So what we're going to do is uh, our, our approach is going to be to use what we know about parametric equations and apply them to, to equations in polar coordinates. So just uh, in polar coordinates, we have our conversions. x equals our cosine theta and y equals our sine theta. So those are our those are our parametric equations and in polar coordinates. And we have some kind of some kind of graph, some kind of curve, some kind of function in polar coordinates. So we have r equals normally r equals some function of theta. So we're going to we're going to use these uh, parametric equations, this these set of parametric equations, with this idea, and apply our our formula for the derivative of a function in parametric equations using these 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 parametric equations with theta as our parameter. So we're going to have um, dy dx. For our derivative is going to be dy d theta over dx d theta. And then we're just going to write out, I'm just going to write out what our numerator and our denominator <coughs> come out, turn out to be when we're using these as our parametric equations. So we have just uh, as an intermediate step, we're going to be taking the derivative with respect to theta of f of theta sine theta r is f of theta and we're going to divide that by the derivative with respect to theta of f of theta cosine theta and then we're going to apply the the product rule here so this turns into kind of a messy looking thing. We get f of theta cosine theta plus f prime theta sine theta. So we're just using the product rule. And we're going to divide by when we take the derivative of this minus f of theta sine theta plus f prime theta cosine theta. <coughs> now we don't we don't necessarily have to go through this use use this formula for our derivative. We know that our derivative is dy dx which is dy d theta over dx d theta. I just wrote everything out explicitly. And we're assuming that f is differentiable and that we don't um, we're assuming here that dx d theta we're not dividing by zero. at our particular point that we're taking taking our derivative. So this this makes sense in terms of what we've talked about with parametric equations so far, right? We're just applying applying what we know. And then using this using this idea, we can say if just like we said before, if dy d theta equals zero and dx d theta is not zero at the same same time then we have a horizontal tangent and we'll just switch those around if dx d theta equals zero and dy d theta is not zero then we have a vertical tangent. So 
So exactly like we've done with parametric equations. Now the only the only little twist here is uh, at the, at the pole, we can have something interesting happen at the pole. So let's talk about our uh, tangent lines at the pole. So at the pole, we have r equals r equals zero. Just as a reminder. So at the pole, if, if we have if r or f of theta equals zero at some particular value of theta. So we're going to say at alpha. So we have at, at theta equals alpha, we have r, r equals zero. And f prime of alpha, and f prime is dr d theta, f prime is not zero. Then the formula for our slope for dy dx I look back here really quickly um, f of theta is zero so these two terms go away and I get some particular value of f prime of theta that's not zero this gives me sine theta over cosine theta or tangent theta So at that particular value of theta, I would get <coughs> tangent alpha. So that tells me that the, that the line theta equals alpha is the tangent line at the pole. So that's our, that's our special case for the pole. So at the pole we need to check, uh, at the pole we have r equals zero. If f prime at a particular value of theta is not zero at the pole, then whatever value of theta that, that gives us a non-zero derivative gives us our tangent line at the pole. So we have to, we have to examine the pole separately for, their, for the tangent lines. Let's have to make sure that f prime is not zero at that particular value of theta that gives us the that gives us r equals zero. So questions questions on our development. It's pretty pretty straightforward application of what we know about parametric equations. So as you as you might be able to imagine, finding these derivatives can get a little bit involved because we're taking derivatives of all these different trig functions. And then to find our to find our vertical and horizontal tangents, we're solving trigonometric equations, trying to figure out where these various trigonometric equations are equal to zero. So that just gives us a little a little added uh, added wrinkle when we're working with polar coordinates. One thing that I want to mention, <coughs> tell you to be careful of, that a lot of students uh, make the mistakes that the slope. is dy dx not dr d theta. So that's a mistake that students make pretty much every year. Confusing the slope dy dx with dr d theta. It would be nice if we just have to do dr d theta to find the slope because it would be a lot easier. But this doesn't, doesn't give us the slope of our of our, the slope of our graph. So what I want to do is I just want to go through one example, um, one polar curve. We'll find our we'll find our slope. We'll find our vertical tangents, horizontal tangents, and tangents at the pole. 
so it takes a little bit to go through go through this example just because of all the derivatives and our, our trig functions. So let's look at r equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta. And we want to find, we're doing several things. We want the slope. The slope of the tangent line at theta equals pi over 6. We want the slope, and I'm just going to, of tangent line at the pole. We want points with horizontal tangents. And we want points with vertical tangents. All right, does anybody remember what the graph of this equation looks like? No? What is it? It's a cardioid. This is a cardioid. So, um, it's nice if you can remember. If you don't remember, you can graph this out. It's nice to take a look at it, so you have an idea of what you're working with. So, let me grab a picture of this cardioid. Oops, that's not the one I wanted. Um, where's my other? Can I have two of those open. There we go. There's a there's our cardioid. Let me grab a picture here. It's always nice to have a have an idea of, of what we're working with, what it looks like, so that when we when we find our, our numbers, we we can tell if they if they make sense based on based on our graph here. So, <clears throat> first thing that we, that we need to do, I'm going to write my function in parametric form. So, in parametric form, because we're applying what we know about parametric equations to this, for, our, for parametric form, x equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta, that's r times cosine theta. So I'm going to distribute here and I get 2 cosine theta plus 2 cosine squared theta. And y equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta times sine theta. And I'll rewrite that as 2 sine theta plus 2 sine theta cosine theta. And now we have to take derivatives. So, so this gives us a hint of why these things turn out, turn out to be not, not necessarily difficult, but there's a lot involved. So dx d theta. Take the derivative of x with respect to theta and what do I get here? What is it? Take the derivative of this, I get negative 2 sine theta. And then the derivative of this, we get a 4. Sine theta 
cosine theta and is my sine going to be positive or negative? For this, negative. Get a negative from the derivative of the cosine. So there is that. And does anybody recognize um, this quantity sine theta, cosine theta? I want to make this a little easier to work with. We have an identity, a trig identity that says two sine theta cosine theta equals sine two theta. So make this a little easier to work with. So I'm going to rewrite this as um, minus two sine two theta minus two sine theta. Make this a little, a little easier to work with, a little easier to solve for, for a zero. And then we're going to take the derivative dy d theta. And when I take the derivative here, I get um, 2 cosine theta plus 2 times sine theta. I'm going to write it all out times minus sine theta. plus cosine theta times cosine theta. And when I simplify this, 2 cosine theta plus 2 times cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And we have a nice identity for this as well. Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta equals cosine 2 theta. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 cosine theta plus 2 cosine 2 theta. So finally, now that we found our derivatives, our slope, Slope is dy d theta over dx d theta. And I can write that as 2 cosine theta plus 2 cosine 2 theta over minus 2 sine 2 theta minus 2 sine theta. And I can simplify that to, I'm going to factor out a uh, a negative 2 here, a minus cosine theta plus cosine 2 theta over sine theta plus sine 2 theta. So there's our slope, our expression for our slope. Now we're finally ready to answer question number 1, which was a slope at theta equals pi over 6. So I plug in pi over 6. And I calculate. So I get minus cosine pi over 6 plus cosine pi over 3 over sine pi over 6. plus sine pi over 3. Cosine pi over 6 is what? Square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of one, uh, pi over 3 <coughs> plus 1 half divided by sine of pi over 6, 1 half. Sine of pi over 3, they're co-functions. So they switch around, and I get negative 1. So our slope at pi over 6 is negative 1. And let's look at our graph. So pi over 6 is going to be 
somewhere around here. And that makes sense that our slope would be about negative 1 there. All right, questions on that process? So we answered part one of our question. Now we need to answer, um, answer part two. Part two says at the pole. We want a slope of our tangent line at the pole. So let's look at that. Everybody good with, with what we did here? Okay. Um, at the pole, so for part B. At the pole, R equals zero. So we need to figure out what angle that is. So at R equals zero, we have uh, two plus two cosine theta equals zero. So if I, I'm trying to solve for, for theta here, so this tells me cosine theta equals negative one. So what value theta gives me uh, cosine of negative one? Theta equals pi. And then we need to check, we need to see if dr d theta is zero at theta equals pi. So dr d theta, I'll just say uh, r prime, is minus two sine theta, and at pi, theta equals pi, this equals sine of pi is zero. So our when r when r is zero, r prime is also zero. So that tells me that I don't have a tangent line at the pole. Does that make sense in terms of our graph? We look back at our graph, and what do we have here at the pole? What's on, what, we have a cusp, right? So there's not going to be a, a tangent line there. <coughs> our derivative would be undefined. All right, so no tangent line at the pole, so there's part B. Part C, we need our horizontal tangents. Our horizontal tangents are when dy d theta equals zero and dx d theta is not zero. So to find when dy d theta is zero, I'm going to find when cosine theta plus cosine two theta equals zero. Well, now we need a way to solve this equation. Anybody have any suggestions? How do we go about solving this? Yes. <laughs> um, let's see, here's what I am going to do. I'm going to look for another identity for cosine two theta. And if I remember, or if I look in the front of my book that lists out a bunch of nice identities, I find that cosine two theta is two cosine squared theta minus one. So I'm going to rewrite this as cosine theta plus two cosine squared theta minus one, and that equals zero. And what can I do with this? What what kind of what kind of equation is it? It's quadratic. It's a quadratic equation with cosine theta as my variable. So I'm going to, hopefully, I'm going to factor this. So anybody see how we can factor this? Yeah. Two cosine theta minus one times cosine theta plus one equals zero. Okay, that looks like something that we can solve. So we know that cosine theta equals negative one. 
or cosine theta equals one half. So what value of theta gives me cosine theta equals negative one? Pi. Um, what did we decide was happening at theta equals pi? That's our cusp, that's our pole. This is the pole. So we already already analyzed the pole. And cosine theta equals one half. Theta equals pi over three and Which, what, what? Negative pi over 3 or a, as a positive angle? Pi pi over 3? Same thing. So our points, if I plug these back into my, my equation to get points, when I'm asked, asked for points, we always want an x, y, or an r theta. So our points are r3, are pi over 3, and I just got that by plugging this into my equation for r, and um, 3 5 pi over 3. And let's look back at our graph. Um, horizontal tangents here and here. Well, theta is going to be about pi over 3 there, looks like. Makes sense. And down here, about 5 pi over 3 for our horizontal tangent. All right, one last step. Vertical tangents. So looking back at our graph again, how many points are we going to find that have vertical tangents? One here, one here, and one here. So we should get three points. What's that? Same tangent, but we have two points that have that same tangent, right? So we should be able to find both of those points. Um, all right, so vertical tangents, we want dx d theta equal to zero. So for this one, we have sine theta plus sine 2 theta equal to 0. And I, it's going to be easier to solve if we don't have this sine 2 theta in here. So I'm going to use the same, the same uh, identity that we used before that says that sine 2 theta is Two sine theta, cosine theta. We went the other way to make our derivatives easier to calculate. Now we're going going back. So I'm going to rewrite this as sine theta plus two sine theta, cosine theta equals zero. This one's not too bad. I can factor out a sine theta. Sine theta times one plus to cosine theta equals zero. So this tells me that sine theta equals zero or one plus two cosine theta equals zero. So sine theta equals zero gives me which points? Zero and pi. And we already decided pi was the pole, so we don't have to worry about that one. And cosine theta here is negative one half. And what value theta gives me cosine of negative one half? Two pi over three and four pi over three. So there are points zero, or our uh, theta values. 0, 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. And we plug that back into our 
the equation for R to get our points. So our points come out to be 4, 0, 1, 2 pi over 3, and 1, 4 pi over 3. And we look back at our graph. Here's the point 4, 0. Here's 1, uh, 2 pi over 3, and 1, 4 pi over 3 here. So questions, questions on that, that, particular, that particular procedure. So we did a lot with this problem. Where did you plug in to get the 4 and the 1? Uh, I plugged into R equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta, our original, our original equation for the cardioid. Okay. So I just plug those angles in to get my R values. All right, so now we know everything we need to know about finding slopes and tangent lines of polar curves. Homework. go.